Police dogs go through an awful lot of training, but sometimes it can be hard to offer all of the real life scenarios they may face. Joining us now to tell us all about their, what they're diving into one rare opportunity is commander of the Bismarck Canine Unit, Sergeant Lyle Sinclair. Thank you for being here this morning, sir. Well, thank you for having me again. Thank you. Now, you're going to tell us all about the different scenarios police dogs go through, starting with a situation on a car. So, why do you run so many different scenarios with dogs and their handlers? Well, it's to get the confidence in the dog and the handler. There's times in the real world you're going to have an issue where the dog's never seen it, or the handler's never seen it. Then they're going to pause and try and figure it out. And if we give them more scenarios and training where the dog pauses and we can tell the handler, okay, here's how you work through it gives confidence to the handler, which goes down the lead to confidence in the dog, and they feel more comfortable doing their job. They do their job better, safer, everyone's safer, the officer, the dog, the backup, the citizens of Bismarck or wherever they're from, and that's why we do it. And there's these scenarios, they've happened someplace, like the one in the car, I stole that from my friends in Phoenix because they actually had that where someone was on a car and the dog didn't know how to react. They also have other scenarios that it, to me, it would seem like, well, the dog should know what to do, but that's a very bad mentality to have. So that's why we put the dog in different scenarios they might see, um, build their confidence, build the handler's confidence, let them work through the problems and issues. So when they encounter them on the street, they're, well, oh, I've seen this, I've done this, or I've done something similar. They're more comfortable, they perform better, the, the handler performs better, and it's just safer for everybody. So there's that car scenario right there Jeez. in slow-mo, which yes. is, you know, extra powerful to see for sure. But we also saw video of in a pool. Yes. So that's kind of a rare opportunity where at the end of the swimming pool season, you get the opportunity to do some training in the pool. Can you tell us about that? Yes, the first time we did water bites was about six years ago in Dickinson. And we had a trainer that was the uh, Dutch police canine commander from Aruba, who was one of the instructors went out to a lake and did water bites there. Um, I thought it was a good idea. I didn't like how he did it, so I brought it back to Bismarck, talked to Walker Pool, begged, pleaded, and they're like, well, we have a, <laughs> we always allow pets to come in when we shut the pool down. We'll give you guys an hour beforehand, and it's just, I've taken them up on that every year. It's good for the dogs. Uh, this is third or fourth year some of the dogs have been in there. Sometimes the first time the dogs, their feet at the water, they're kind of like, I don't know about this. So then I tease them up more bring them out deeper in the water, um, actually dunk them in the water, their confidence, um, bring them back to the handler, and you can see that they're, oh, I want to stay and fight, I don't want to go back to dad, so it's good for the dogs, good for the handlers. Um, we'd never send a dog into water, but we want them to be prepared if there's someone hiding in cattails or how the dog reacts, and um, the handlers know about it, and just another scenario for the handlers to like, use in training and uh, work with their dog on. From what I understand, as you've had mentioned, sometimes people will hide in water. Yeah, and absolutely. so that's partly why you do this training to kind of get the dog comfortable if they have to go out there yep. and get wet, if you will. Yep. Um, can you tell us an example of that or have you faced that exact scenario? We haven't in, in, North, in Bismarck, but I know I do a lot of uh, work with Minnesota guys. And there's a lot of times where they'll track someone into cattails or something. Uh, that someone's hiding or I've done training through the cattails and dogs kind of stop on their feet at water. I know the first time I had training where we tracked somebody through water, uh, my dog was like, I don't know about this at first. And he was a, a very hard dog, not much bothered him, so that kind of surprised me. So we want to make sure the guys are prepared for as much as we can pre prepare them for so they go on the street. But, you know, fortunately we've never had to use this, but you know, there's a lot of things we train for and hope to never have to use versus encounter it and not train on it. So that's kind of our model. We, you know, train to a threat level eight. And if we see a threat level four in the street, we're more than prepared. So, mm -hmm. wow. And you got to be the lucky volunteer in the pool, I noticed. It, it, it's, Was it's, that fun? It's fun. <laughs> you have a little more reaction time normally. Uh, this year, uh, you can see Mesa came through pretty hot and <laughs> was holy cow. It's like she really in water as fast as she came in, but it was, uh, it was fun. Yeah. Well, we all have our ideas of what fun is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sergeant Sinclair, thank you so much for being here this morning, sir. Absolutely. Thanks and for having me. And if someone has a question about the canine unit, how should they uh, get a hold of you? Well, they can call the police department and leave a voicemail for me or uh, shoot me an email at lsinclairbismarckmd.gov, and I'll reply as soon as I can. Okay, fair enough. Well, thanks again, sir. You bet. Thank you for having me.
Okay, now coming up next, Marlo is going to let us know what we should celebrate on today's National Day calendar. Always look forward to finding out what National Day it is. And we have some entertainment news also on the way. So.